Module 3, Chapter 2.2, Vertical and Horizontal Shifts of Graphs. Now, remember, linear functions have straight line graphs. Quadratic functions have parabola-shaped graphs. What about cubic functions? What about absolute value functions? Well, cubic functions have the kind of shapes that go like this right here. Almost like half a parabola and then the other half of the parabola. Absolute value functions will always have V-shaped graphs. The absolute value part is never negative, therefore it probably will not drop below the x-axis. What about square root functions? Well, remember we said square root functions look like parabolas laying on their sides. So, just thinking about this, the vertical shifts, if C is greater than zero, if that means if C is a positive number, then the graph of f of x plus C is obtained by shifting the graph of f of x upward c units. Now think about this. If we know our basic f of x graph, and we're wanting to graph f of x plus c, this basically just adds to the y values, which means basically we're just going to shift that graph up whatever this number is. Or if it's f of x minus c, then that's just going to take 3 off of the y values or shift the graph of f of x downward c units. So if you were graphing a graph and you had this picture right here for y equals f of x, then f of x plus c is we are just going to move this graph up, however many c is, and put the same graph on there. Whereas if your original problem right here is y equals f of x, then f of x minus c means we're going to drop this graph down however many c units. Okay? Now, horizontal shifts, what happens is the x value is affected. So the graph of f of x plus c. Now you notice this is still in the parentheses, so this affects the x value. And if it's a plus c, that is actually going to shift your, gra shift your graph back to the left c units. Or if they asked you to graph f of x minus c, then you're going to shift it to the right c units. So if your original problem is f of x, y equals f of x, and you want to do f of x plus c, just remember that's inside the parentheses, so we're going to go backwards c units. Over here, if your original problem is y equals f of x, and you're doing now f of x minus c, then we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to move it to the right c units. And if you get confused, remember you can always plug it in your calculator. So if your original problem is f of x, okay, and our original function is f of x is equal to x. Now remember this was our identity, which means it's going to be this line right through here. f of x plus c is going to shift us up c places or because that's an f of x minus 3, that's going to shift us down 3 places. So what happens is sometimes it's real good to just sort of give us a point. So this minus 3 shifts us down, so 1, 2, 3. Now we just reproduce that graph over here on this graph, so we get 0, negative 3. Whereas if they were asking us f of x plus 3, then that means we just go x plus 3. And that one's a little bit weird because then it still looks like we shifted. 
I'll tell you what, though. It looks like we shifted up three, one, two, three. But if we draw that same graph, basically it did the same thing. It shifted us back three. Okay, let's do it again. And remember, any of these you do, you can do on your calculator. You can do Y1, Y2, Y3, and see how the translations move the graph over. Okay, so f of x is equal to x squared is a parabola starting at 0, 0, going up. f of x equals x squared plus 2. Because the plus 2 is on the end, that means it affects it heightwise, which means we're going to shift it up two places, but it's the same shape graph, which would be with a vertex of 0, 2. Now, this should actually say f of x minus 3. f of x minus 3 would look like it's an it's inside the parenthesis. You change the sign in here, which means we're going to go over 3, put a dot, and then we get the same graph. Okay, so if we do this on the calculator, we'd say y equals x, y2 equals, sorry, that should have been x squared, y2 would be x squared plus 2, and y3 would be, in parentheses, x minus 3 squared. So watch them when they come in. There's your x squared. There's your x squared plus 2. And there's your x minus 3 squared. Now, describe how the graph of y equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 6 would be obtained by translating the graph of f of x equals square root of x. Now, square root of x is just like our linear function that took off through here, except instead of dropping down here in the negatives, we're going to bump it back up in the positive, and it would do this. So that, that's our original problem f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Now, the plus 2 that's in the absolute value is going to shift it to the left two places. Boom, boom. So now what we're going to have is this graph taken off through there. Okay? So the second part would be f of x is equal to x plus 2 inside the bars. The third one, the minus 6 on the end, is going to shift us down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we're going to do our same little basic shape absolute value. So that would be the third step. f of x is equal to x plus 2 whoops, bar minus 6. Now remember... All of these transformations can be observed on the graphing calculator. Enter the original function as y1, and the new function as y2, and you should be able to make sure that your shifts are going in the right directions. Now, how does that affect the domain and the range? Well, the domains and range of functions may or may not be affected by translations. If the domain is negative infinity to infinity, then a horizontal shift is not going to affect that domain. It would still be negative infinity to infinity. If the domain is not all real numbers, then the horizontal shift will affect the domain. If the range is negative infinity to infinity, a vertical shift will not affect the range. But if it's not all real numbers, then a vertical shift will. Let me give you an example. If we had y equals the square root of x, and we know that that graph goes from here this way, then the domain would be 
from zero to infinity. Whereas if we went y equals the square root of x minus 2, well that x minus 2 is going to shift our graph over two places and then our graph is going to start from there. So now our domain would be from 2 to infinity. And same thing for your vertical values. You are now ready to do your homework on my math lab from section 2.2. .2.